I think what brought us all together was an interest in paint and how can you paint without paint? It wasn't like there was a manifesto or something that was all a specific type of painting, but it was maybe the fact that we were working in diverse uh, approaches to painting mm -hmm. that sort of brought us together. And I think that helped make our exhibitions a little bit more cohesive because you didn't go into them thinking there was a thesis, but that we're, our works covered quite a broad range. And I'd like to think that the quality of the work, you know, brought it together. The uh, artists run centers were predominantly run by a generation older than us and were showing predominantly artists of their generation or if not that then you know like Mercer Union that was showing Annette Messenger or Helmut Dorner you know artists of that caliber you know to, to actually apply for an exhibition a space like that just seemed implausible. It wasn't, you know, like Robin Collier's generation where Carmen Lamana was showing up at the OCA um, exhibition and handpicking people from the grad show. Like, it just wasn't happening like that. So I think we felt like we had to do something on our own if we wanted to show. Rick Santon and I had our show in Roundup and Nestor was one of five people, I think, that came that weekend. I, I think um, I sent my regrets. Right, maybe you sent your regrets. <laughs> um, and uh, I don't think Nestor said anything uh, when he went around the, the, the exhibition, but he, um, he gave us, you know, that kind of positive, like he spent time with the work. And so Rick and I were like, hey, that cat, you know, he really, he really seemed to, to get into what we were doing. saw us after that was that we were a collective and that that must be the name of our collective but up until then that was the name of an exhibition and we're like oh I guess we're painting disorders now <laughs> yeah I thought it was a nice way to bring in um, a bit of humor into what we were doing like you know that we were maybe taking the piss a little bit out of what we were we were doing and it didn't necessarily you know come across as being really pretentious or it had a lot of nuance to it. You know, we liked the idea of us being sick. We didn't want to just uh, put on a show of, uh, you know, retro kind of painting and have people just be relieved that we were doing something on canvas. We wanted to indicate that we were, yeah, we were trying to think about painting a little differently too. So it had all those nuances and at the same time, it just seemed funny. For me, uh, there was one show, and it was in, I think it was 1987 at the S.L. Simpson Gallery. Uh, it was called Ultra Surd, and it was the Saatchi collection. Lots of Neo Geo works. Uh, I was interested. So there must have been um, maybe 10 artists in that show uh, that were at the height of Neo Geo at that time. I'd been following the Toronto scene, which uh, focused on representational painting. And then I walked into that show, and there wasn't anything representational about it. And I said, ah, freedom! I can leave the figure now! Not, uh, not tying yourself to the medium or the particular ideas about what painting meant, um, but having like a slightly objective relationship to it, and by extension, like a slightly objective relationship to our collective. How much money do you have? <laughs> I think that was the number one question. How much money can we all chip in? That's how they were funded. And um, because we got generous uh, beer deals with Brick, um, we recovered quite a bit of money, I think. Uh, I think we had money left over. In the end, there's still a box of money. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't figured out what to do with that box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.
But as the shows progressed, then we started to, we figured things out. We, uh, we, uh, we ended up getting grants for the last, I think the last show was completely paid for by grants and, and with the or third show rather, that, and that enabled us to fly in um, Toma Apps and Silke Otto Knapp for that exhibition. You know, sometimes you can see an album cover and you don't know anything about the artist, but you just look at the album cover and you go, I'm gonna love this record. And I think we wanted the invitation to do the same thing, and it was actually the size of a CD cover, actually. But when you looked at it, it said something about the work that was going into it, the thought that it was laid out in such a way that it, it gave you an idea of the quality that you could expect. I was shocked. I was shocked that anyone would come to our <coughs> exhibition, yeah. but I was doubly shocked that a few hundred people would come to, uh, to our show. And I was just sort of looking around going, who are all these people and why are they here? Yeah, you know, we weren't like in this fever of promotion, but we we're just being very kind of pragmatic about it. We sent, you know, press releases out and you know, just tried to be professional about it. I think maybe entrepreneurial isn't the word to use to um, describe how we wanted to get people out because there was certainly no motivation for us other than to maybe not lose too much money by you know, <laughs> yeah, asking a exactly. dollar for each beer or whatever. Yeah. So the idea was just to get people out and to make it an event. There was never an emphasis on sales. Yeah, you know, there's always been this you know, emphasis on some sort of renaissance type uh, painting and I feel like in this emphasis on showing your skill as a, as a representational painting, painter and then that being like this kind of dead end you know that's <clears throat> still kind of plagues painting to some degree is that you know that there's not there's you know they don't want to push it any further than just a straight kind of representation people are just as interested in doing representational work now as they were when we were young. And I think maybe you're right, I think maybe there's less, you know, pure abstraction, um, but it's certainly not, you know, it's not excluded uh, by any means. There is some out there. I mean, I would have characterized the current work as being a little less um, bound by any sort of restrictions, uh, yeah. that it's really anything does go, and I think the, maybe the, the current trend is not to have a trend, mm -hmm. or at least as far as I can tell, that, um, that people or younger painters are painting whatever the hell they want to. Right. You know, in the end we just couldn't do all the things maybe that we wanted to do. We wanted to do some curatorial things. Um, we still would you know, like to do some curatorial things, so there's still sort of things that maybe negative seems like a kind of strong word about it, but disappointing. We would still do exhibitions. Um, I don't think there was anything, I don't think we, we ceased to be like a, a collective in that, in that way, but we just ran out of a opportunities to, to, to advance what we were doing, and we didn't feel like it was interesting just to put on the same old, same old. So we needed it to be more than just a venue to, to show our work. We needed it to be something that spoke to our ideas. By the third show, uh, some of us started um, getting solo shows. And so it's just the amount of work, trying to do your own work, and just as Eric was saying, trying to uh, keep a job, uh, trying to have friends. <laughs> I got very, very tired uh, and just couldn't, had to say no by the time the last series of shows came on. Plus going into these really dumpy spaces and putting a lot of effort into them and cleaning them up and making them look really good, um, you can only do that so many times <laughs> before you start to tire of the, the process. Yeah, that's and, uh, yeah. I also think painting disorders died a natural death, if it in fact has died. Do you want to put on another show maybe? Um, <coughs> but it, it, it did everything we wanted it to at the beginning, and then it evolved into something that involved other artists, and it, yeah, it sort of reached a point where it 
kind of didn't need to exist anymore in the in the context that it did. Mm -hmm.